Thanks a lot, Jiao. Um, so, uh, you, if you look at the schedule, the name of the talk would have been Compute Framework .jl. So last night we decided to rename it to Dagger, because, <laughs> because it, <laughs> and then we moved it to Julia Parallel as well. Um, uh, the name contains the word Dag, and also it means a tool to cut things up. Actually, Viral came up with this. Uh, so uh, as you go through the talk, you'll re you'll uh, it, the name will make more sense. So Dagger is a framework to uh, express computations, uh, and Dagger takes those com computations and uh, reorganizes uh, how they are uh, how they are actually performed so that they can they can be run out of code, which means that uh, even if the data does not fit in memory, you can actually do it. And you can run, run the computation in parallel. Um, so at the higher level um, API, uh, it's an array library uh, from the higher level point of view. And you can have other data parallel uh, uh, libraries built on top of Dagger. It's, uh, the scheduler in Dagger is based on Dask, which is a Python framework for out of core and parallel computing. Um, so I just want to give a motiv motiva motivating example for why this would be important. So right now on my machine, I have like 1.7 GB of RAM. Uh, uh, so, but I, I want to work with, a, work with an array which is about 8 GB, but I can't allocate it because obviously Julia is going to say you don't have enough memory. One way, to, one way I could do this is use mmap and then mmap uh, all the data to a file and fill it up with something, which takes about 32 seconds. And I could go over each element and do something, uh, like the sum operation, for example, um, which takes quite a while. But this quickly uh, fails, because if you are to do something like this, oh, x is something else here. Oh, well, uh, I shouldn't have run this. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, if you want to do some, uh, an expression, run an expression like this, uh, what is going to happen is um, you're going to have to allocate a new array, which is 8 GB for the sign, and a new array, which is 8 GB for the cos. And then you, you, you have to c compute the square, which will like, again allocate an 8 GB array. It, it's not going to fit in memory. Uh, so what compute frame, what, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What Dagger allows you to do is, uh, um, all right, yeah, it's fine. Uh, what Dagger allows you to do is uh, create arrays which are chunked up into smaller pieces. Uh, so here I'm creating an array with a block block partition of uh, 32 million elements. So 32 million elements sum up to 256 MB approximately. So each block is a 250 MB block, but I still have to. Uh, uh, I still have one billion elements in it. Uh, uh, but the point is that uh, I haven't act actually created the array yet, but uh, I need to run compute to do it. Um, there is a way to save directly a result of a computation into disk in Dagger. Uh, if you say save my x node, which I created above, uh, to a file, and then compute that, it's going to take a while, and then give, uh, save all, all that data to a few files on the disk, uh, actually one, one per block. And then you can load that data. Uh, I've already uh, saved it, so I, I can load the data. And then uh, I, can, I can run this function, uh, run this expression. And what I get back is, again, um, again a higher level DAG, which says that load the data, do the sign on it, uh, and the cost on it. And, and the squares, and then the plus operation, and then sum it up. So the result of this operation is just one number. Uh, as you saw in the out of core example, this wouldn't have worked. Uh, but it, if you say compute the result in the end, result being this expression, uh, it's going to do the right thing uh, and uh, uh, compute the uh, answer. I can, I'm going to show you uh, how, how the Computation actually pr proceeds. So we have a file with uh, 
32 different parts. Uh, we have this array with 32 different parts. Um, I'm going to have to. Okay. Uh, so what essentially happens is uh, Dagger is going to load each part separately, uh, run sign on it, then run the square function, uh, and then run cos on the same loaded array, and then run the uh, x squared function, and then it's going it, it is going to know that it can release sign cos and the part, so it's going to release that bit of memory, and then it's going to take these inputs and do the sum. Uh, do the addition and then the sum operation, which will re result in just one number. So uh, it could also do this in parallel, and that's what it does actually. If you have more than one process, uh, so uh, the parallel uh, rendition of this would be: uh, processes will pick each subtree and then go depth first, so that they can deallocate as much as they can as they. Uh, proceed through the computation. Uh, that's the DAG for that computation. Uh, uh, here's matrix multiply. I'm creating a matrix called X, uh, uh, um, which is A in this picture. Uh, so which has 300 into 200 elements. This is a very small mat matrix for the purpose of this example. Um, and it is cut up into blocks of 100 into 100. Um, and the computation I'm, I'm interested in, in is uh, X transpose X. Uh, so X transpose is look, going to look something like this. And uh, X is going to look something like this, now that they are all blocked up. Uh, so, the, so the very nice thing about uh, multiplying um, matrices with blocks in them is that you just do the matrix multiplication on the blocks. Uh, it's exactly the same process, but the star actually dispatches on mat matrix multiply on the blocks. So essentially, the output is take this row of blocks, take this column of blocks, and then do a dot product to get this block. Uh, so the DAG for that looks something like this. Um, and Compute Framework uh, and Dagger uh, actually optimizes some of it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, for example, the transpose. Uh, once you load the data, once you allocate the data in this case, uh, you can do the transpose and then use, use the uh, allocated data to do the multiplication for the next step. But uh, Uh, it looks like um, yeah. Uh, I disabled swap water bad move. Uh, does anyone have questions? Maybe we should ask a question or two about Shashi's. Uh, uh, <coughs> I'm going to hard restart it, I think. Yeah, if anyone has questions. So this is actually the same thing. Uh, if, you, if anyone, if you attended the parallel workshop, I, this is exactly where I got to in the parallel workshop. There is more to it. Uh, uh, so I'll ask a question. So yeah. uh, how, um, how, how did the, when you said that uh, the, uh, I guess, dagger now, yeah. uh, Oh, um, right now it does a simple common sub-expression elimination, which is just a dictionary lookup on each node of the graph. Uh, uh, you could, in theory, have a lot of uh, optimizations like loop fusion, for example. So if you have a map and a map and a reduce, you could go do the map function, compose the map functions, and then do the reduce in a for loop. Um, Um, uh, 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to open the second notebook. OK. Um, so what you're seeing on screen, uh, so I'm going to talk about like the internals and like the organization of how Dagger works uh, now. Toggle toolbar. Okay. Uh, okay. So what you're seeing on screen is the connection machine, uh, Alan's favorite computer, also one of the most photogenic computers of all time. Uh, the co connection machine one, which was the first connection machine, had like 65,000 processors, and each one would compute one bit of data, um, which is like really amazing. Uh, just think about. Uh, and uh, they made this uh, thing called Starlisp, um, also called com Connection Machine Lisp, uh, where data used to be represented as mappings. So arrays were a, sp a special case of this, where indexes were the keys and the values were the values. Uh, so they essentially abstracted the idea of where data is using these keys. So depending on what, operation is, what, what operations you're doing with the uh, arrays, they would go and fetch the data from the correct address and do, do them. Uh, this is an elegant mo model, um, but probably not suitable for the hardware of today. Uh, so what uh, Dagger sort of borrows some ideas from this. Uh, it defines a thing called domain, which is essentially a range of keys that uh, your data uh, is, uh, is, uh, comes under. I can say. Uh, so if, if I take a random array and see the domain of it, I get this object called dense domain, uh, which is 1 to 100 and, uh, in one dimension and 1 to 150 in, in, in the other dimension. Um, and there is a, so this is how you can picture it. It's sort of a shadow of the actual data, uh, the domain. Uh, so there is a thing called partition scheme. So you can define your own partition schemes for how to slice up your data. And uh, there is this generic function called partition, which uh, takes the partition scheme. In this case, the partition scheme is a block partition, and then cuts up the domain into uh, according to the scheme, basically. It, here, over here, the partition scheme is 50 into 50, blocks of 50 into 50. So the output is some, something like this. Uh, uh, so I took a crack at implementing uh, the slicing on this package by Julia Computing called ND sparse data. Uh, so what, what ND sparse is, uh, it's a ND uh, n dimensional array, but the indexes are not necessarily integers, continuous integers. They, they can be any continuous quantity. You can think of it as an n-dimensional space where some points have some data. Uh, so, uh, so uh, for example, an ND sparse array looks like this. Uh, this thing has uh, 10 elements with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the dimension 5 into 6 into 7 into 10, uh, where the first, first uh, dimension is uh, random integers from 1 to 5. Second dimension is random characters from one, uh, A to F. Third dimension is uh, random U intates from 1 to 7. And the fourth dimension is the numbers one to eight, one to ten, uh, and the f and the fifth argument here is the data, a sixth argument. Okay, um, so you can index into this data structure using ranges of all these things, uh, which is really cool. Uh, for example, over here I'm indexing um, the first dimension between two to five, second dimension between b to e, and the third and di uh, fourth dimensions I'm telling it to ignore. Uh, so you can, in, comp in Dagger, define uh, a domain type for this data structure. Uh, let's call it ND sparse domain for, the, uh, for now. Uh, and you can def define the get index method, which takes an actual ND sparse um, data structure and the, the ND sparse domain, and then indexes into it. So th over here, it's a very simple data structure. It's, it just wraps around the indexes, uh, which, which is a tuple. And now you can def define this uh, domain function, 
which in Dagger takes a normal data structure and returns the domain of it. Uh, for, exam uh, for example, as you saw earlier, the domain of an uh, array is the dense domain object. Um, so, what we are defining here is go, go through every, uh, every dimension, uh, figure out the uh, bounds, the minimum and the maximum value, and then uh, create the domain. So, if you look at the domain of A, which is printed right here, uh, it says that there it goes from ranges 1 to 5, A to F, and 1 to 7, 1 to 10. Uh, so, next we can define the partitioning scheme. Here I am just uh, going to have a cut, cut, cut stuple, which, which says how many times to slice along each dimension. Uh, and then there is this uh, slice split range uh, helper function inside dagger, which takes a range and then a number and then splits it, splits that range in equal parts, uh, uh, so that the length of the pieces is the number you give it. Uh, so as you can see, it can split integers, event types, and characters. Uh, so now we have to define a method for the partition generic function uh, with the ND sparse partition and the ND sparse domain as the arguments. Um, so what I'm essentially doing is taking the cuts and the ranges and then uh, splitting each range correspondingly. And then uh, I have this helper function called Cartesian product, which will take these part uh, slices and then go over each possible part Cartesian product, which is like which looks like this. Cartesian product just looks like this. If you have one, uh, these three arrays, then you are going to get. It's it's easier to see with just two. Um, yeah, so it's like all combinations of its input. So that's what we need. So those are the parts of our uh, data. Um, now, if I call partition, I am going to get back this object called domain split, uh, which contains the parts, which look like this. Um, now, I can call the distribute method, uh, fun, uh, distribute um, constructor inside dagger uh, on, uh, on an ND sparse object, which is A here, and then compute it, and then see the length of the parts, and then if I if I define how to concatenate the data back together, I can actually get get it to distribute and then get it back together into to form a uh, form a sequential type. So, if you look at the DAG, it's already trying to do map reduce on this parse. Um, okay. Um, so. There is some problem with the reduce that is defined on ND sparse right now, so I, this doesn't work. Um, I, sh I needed a bit more time to fix that, but yeah, um, it's, it's possible to basically use your own um, collection types with Dagger by defining like what some uh, so two types and three generic functions, I think, uh, three methods, I think. Yeah, so there is also a generic setup for execution. Um, uh, let me see if I can get this back. Okay, uh, I had a GPU instance um, with, uh, damn it. Okay. Sorry about that, I had to restart my computer. Okay, this notebook is still running. So, so, Every co computation in Dagger runs inside a context, uh, and the context is basically the num uh, a list of processes that are on that machine. Um, for example, the default context is all the workers, so it's OS proc two, OS proc three, and the numbers are Julia pits, not uh, OS pits. So, 
I, I ran this in the wrong order. So, okay, there you go. So, when I say compute CTX, which is the context, and then pass it some expression, it's going to try to do that, uh, run that expression on the devices under that context. <coughs> So what I can do is uh, use ArrayFire to de define a GPU, GPU, uh, GPU processor type, and then override these three generic functions, and I mean add methods to them, and I can actually run some computation on both the CPU and the GPU. So. If, if my context were just the GPU, it would run all the computation on the GPU. But if it were on, if I had two things in it, and one of them was a CPU process, or, or the OS process, and one of them was a GPU process, it would still run it by communicating the right pieces in the right, at the right time, and leave the pieces where they, where they ended up. So over here, I have two arrays on the GPU, two parts on the CPU. I can still get index into them, and the dagger is going to bring the right parts and do the concatenation. Um, I had another example, uh, which was a logistic regression code. Meanwhile, I'm going to Uh, yeah, this is the logistic regression example. Uh, if you look at the code, it's just like you would write a sequential um, logistic regression code, except there's a gather in here, which will run these computations in parallel, and then um, get, get back a sequential array, and then you can do like the so, uh, chol fact on it, and then uh, figure out if you want to stop, and then spawn off the uh, computation again. Um, and this runs on eight processes uh, in this case. Um, if I go back here, I should be able to. OK, so there is also a debugger. Uh, it's a UI debugger. And so UI. OK. So I've launched this Blink window here. And then I have a little Azure app to take the debug data from any computation and then like plot it. Um, it takes a while. Oh, I, s I just had one process, so it's just doing compute throughout. Uh, uh, I think, how much time do I have left? Six minutes, OK. Um, OK, I'm just going to go back to my slideshow here and uh, talk about the future planned stuff uh, that is going to come with Dagger. So right now, when you do an operation, you get back a result of type computation. Uh, we want that to go away and become abstract array. But this also means that you want, you'll have to give up generic functions like uh, map and reduce, which would otherwise work on ND sparse and uh, abstract array, but that's, I think, the right thing to do anyway. Uh, and then Mike is working on a fuzzer for compute framework uh, for, for Dagger, so which, which is basically this thing which uh, generates uh, all sorts of uh, code which you can compare against uh, two different implementations of the same thing. For example, this is. This is an output. He doesn't like the GenSim stuff, so he, he uses like animal names for, the, for his variables. Uh, so 
we need to bike shed the internals and make it better. Uh, and loop fusion and reordering for performance is something we can look at. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, quite simple to do the low hanging loop fusions. Um, it's also possible to implement optimizations of the partitioning based on like simulation. Uh, so you uh, perform some compute on a node and then figure out how fast it can do it um, or how fast it can communicate. Um, and then Mike is working on this package called Flux, which is uh, a, a library for expressing machine learning algorithms in as one-liners, basically, which he likes to do a lot. Um, uh, so we are looking at how best to integrate this with that, with model parallelism and such. Uh, that's going to be really exciting. Um, so it's also possible to write high-level APIs, which can compile down to sequential code as well as uh, compute, uh, as well as dagger code. Uh, Tensor operations.jl is a model for this. Uh, it's by Juto. Um, it's a very nice package which uh, takes like Einstein notations of tensor operations and then uh, compiles it down to use, uses generated functions to make it really, really fast. Uh, we also want to look at uh, supporting other collection types like ND sparse like properly. In, in, the, in the case I showed you, it doesn't actually take care of distributing the data uh, such that everyone gets the right amount of load, but then the scheduler should actually uh, even that out a bit. Uh, but we can still do better. Uh, we can tie into data frames and ODBC for uh, par uh, parallelly working on them. Um, there are some issues with the communication, especially on 0 0.5, uh, because serialization has gotten a bit slower. Um, we can fix those. Uh, more heuristics to the scheduler, obviously, will be better. And more UI tooling, which I was going to demo, but maybe I don't have en enough time. And finally, thanks to Viral, Tanmay, and Amit. Um, uh, colleagues in Bangalore who helped, uh, like every day we used to have discussions about this and this is what we ended, ended up with. And the MIT team, uh, Alan, Andreas, Jared, uh, Oscar, and Giaho. Um, uh, Mike Innes for all the discussions about this and Flux and the fuzzer. Uh, and Ranjan for the GPU stuff, RFIR. Matthew Rocklin finally. Um, who wrote Dusk and writes on this website, uh, which is uh, very interesting. Um, and Starless Penshapil for some good ideas. Thanks. Oh, yeah, OK. I could have just shown pictures, I guess. Yeah, this is the Gantt chart with four processes. Um, you can see the red red parts are the communication. I actually have two cores on my computer, so where, where I'm running four uh, processes, which which kind of gives a hit. 
and then sometimes the worker might be computing a little bit, so it takes a while. Um, so that's the visualizer. Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Does anyone have questions? If not. Oh, um, I think the fuzzer will bring out some very weird stuff. Oh, actually, I was going to show one, <laughs> one which is really complicated. Uh, but never mind now. It's okay. uh,